physicists generally shy away from addressing issues that can't be reliably reproduced in a lab. Ignoring UFOs, ESP, and religious experiences to instead focus on the nuts and bolts of our physical world. If they do address these phenomena at all, they will likely say, no, such things do not exist. There is no mechanism for these phenomena in the established fields of classical physics or quantum mechanics. But even these physicists will admit, classical physics and quantum mechanics do not explain everything. The search for a unifying theory of everything is still the main goal of physics. One such theory, around since the 80s and still not proven or disproven, may be such a unifying theory. Uniting not just the field of quantum mechanics and classical physics, but also unifying the realms of the natural and the supernatural. You've likely heard of it before. String theory. It's fallen out of vogue in recent years, not because it has been proven wrong, but because many believe it falls within the same realm as UFOs and religion. Untestable. This is because string theory deals with the very very small. It postulates that instead of the fabric of reality being a collection of points, they are rather lines, gaining length as they gain energy. The length of these lines is around the magnitude of the Planck length. This length is often misunderstood to be the resolution of space-time, or smallest unit of length possible. However, this is not so. It is just the length at which our current physics break down and become unexplainable. We have little hope of ever running experiments or observations at this small of a scale. Currently, the Large Hadron Collider can probe distances as small as 10 to the negative 17 centimeters. To detect the fundamental string elements, we need to be able to probe distances as small as 10 to the negative 32nd centimeters. Numbers at this level are truly mind-boggling. This means we'd have to increase our detection powers by 10 to the 15th times. To do this, we'd also have to use energy around that same magnitude larger than we currently use. Let's just say that most people aren't optimistic about being able to directly test string theory in this way. But although we may not be able to interact with the small scale on which string theory works, that small scale may be able to interact with us. And here's where it gets weird. The math behind string theory explains all of the underlying physical forces of the universe. But to do so, it requires at least 11 dimensions. We're used to life in four dimensions. We can move in any of the three spatial directions. Left, right, forward, backward, up, and down. And we are always moving forward in the dimension of time. If string theory is true, those are only the dimensions we can observe. There are really seven other directions in which you could move. Well, not you. Even the atoms that make you up are way too large to move into these extra dimensions. But the strings that make up reality are free to vibrate around in these unknowable dimensions. If your head is spinning right now, it's of no fault of your own. I don't think it's possible to actually visualize higher dimensional space. The implications can be shown mathematically quite easily though. The three spatial dimensions we know of are typically called X, Y, and Z. You could think of any object positioned in your room as having an X, Y, Z coordinate. With six extra spatial dimensions, it literally means that at every spot in your room, there exists a mind-boggling number of additional points Every X, Y, Z coordinate would also have a A, B, C, D, E, F coordinate and every combination of those. Of course, we can only see and interact with things where A, B, C, D, E, F are all equal to zero. The current mainstream string theories all tell us that these extra dimensions are finite and very small, giving us some relief to the exponential explosion and what could literally be all around us. But this doesn't necessarily limit the complexity of what these extra dimensions could contain. I mentioned earlier that the Planck length is not really the fundamental unit of length in the universe. 
you could potentially divide and divide and divide and get smaller and smaller units of space. Potentially, you could go on forever if space has a continuous, fractal-like nature. We don't yet know if this is the case, but if so, then even though these extraspatial dimensions are incredibly small, they could still contain an infinite amount of subdividable spaces, and thus an infinite level of complexity. This extra space isn't empty either. In fact, it's postulated that dark matter, the invisible stuff that accounts for 95% of the matter in the universe, is contained within these extra dimensions. It is also postulated that the warping and connections of these extra dimensions could be responsible for some of the stranger phenomenon of quantum mechanics, such as quantum entanglement. One could easily think of similar extra-dimensional structures being behind seemingly supernatural phenomena, such as ESP. Stranger yet, there could be life that exists in these extra dimensions at a scale undetectable to us. And while counterintuitive, it would make sense that if such life does exist, it would have a much better chance at interacting with us than we would with them. Light gets more powerful as the wavelength gets smaller. This is why we would need incredible amounts of energy to generate light with a small enough wavelength to see within these small dimensions. But if there is matter, complexity, and life beyond our understanding in these extra spatial dimensions, they might have a better control of energy on such small wavelengths. These high energies could be what their world is comprised of. Perhaps the vast zero-point energy and background energy fluctuations are shadows of these extra dimensions. And as such, maybe they can probe or interact with our dimensions. We might see such probes as orbs of light moving in our dimensions with impunity. Such entities might even manifest physical objects in our dimensions, turning energy into matter with E equals MC squared. You can really run wild with this theory. Fifth or higher dimensional beings could interact with us in unimaginable ways. Like we as a 3D entity can flip through the pages of a 2D storybook, higher dimensional beings may be able to similarly flip through possible pasts and futures and to other universes entirely. They might also have a much deeper understanding and access to our 3D space. Just as we can touch any part of a 2D painting, a higher dimensional entity may be able to directly access any part of our 3D universe. Potentially even accessing and interacting with the individual neurons in our brains. It could be that the origin of religions, folklore tales of fairies and goblins, and modern day encounters of aliens might all be these extra dimensional beings manifesting in our space. This is not a new idea either. Jacques Vallée and Ellen Hynek introduced this interdimensional hypothesis as an alternative to the extraterrestrial hypothesis of alien encounters. Extra spatial dimensions isn't a new thing with string theory either. The idea became popular over a hundred years ago for similar scientific reasons. Adding higher dimensions turns out to be a theme in unifying physics. A fourth extra spatial dimension has also been linked to supernatural phenomenon since around that time as well. I don't think that the extra-dimensional or the extraterrestrial theories are mutually exclusive. With a 3D universe as vast as we know, it seems impossible that there is not other life out there. But if there really is an almost infinite amount of additional space all around us where most of the matter in the universe is located, it also seems impossible that there isn't life located in those realms. And such co-located life would have much more of a stake in the future of humanity than extraterrestrial life. Although we aren't able to generate the energy levels to probe into these dimensions in a controlled laboratory setting, we have generated these energy levels fairly recently. Atomic explosions produce these levels and thus may be very interesting or concerning to any such life. It may be no coincidence that UFO events seem to have increased in our nuclear age, nor that they have seemingly an interest in our nuclear technology. So 
Where does this leave us? Is string theory and extra-dimensional life the realm of untestable and unknowable? Is it all the domain of philosophy? Not quite. Physicists continue to do experiments that might someday show leakage of energy into these other dimensions, proving their existence. This would be a first step of confirming the framework of string theory, but we'd need more to show signs of extra-dimensional life and its influence on us. We might not be totally out of luck here. There are telltale clues that matter would have if it is traveling between dimensions. If we were to somehow capture or otherwise be able to study UAP or other phenomenon more closely, we may be able to pick up on these signs. More information about these events is also desperately needed. Do these objects fade in and out of existence as we might expect extra-dimensional objects to? Or can we track them all the way to the upper limits of our atmosphere? Most far out there? Is it possible to get them to show themselves? There are many who claim this is possible. If you meditate and invite them to show themselves, people claim they are able to manifest UFOs on demand. They call this the CE5 protocol, for close encounters of the fifth kind, that is, human-initiated contact. Perhaps there is a kernel of truth to this. Higher dimensional beings could be constantly aware of us, and may indeed react to our conscious thoughts. Again, this is not a new concept. People have been praying and meditating for as long as we can tell. Science providing a framework for this type of communication is a fairly new concept, though. And such a framework coming from a potentially scientific theory of everything is enough to make one pause. It is admittedly a tough concept to understand and accept. Perhaps when people talk about the public not being ready for disclosure, perhaps it is due to this fundamental change in understanding of reality that would be required. The acceptance that the four dimensions that we experience are not the only ones really would take a Copernican-type revolution of thought. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you think anything I've stated is wrong or misleading, please leave a comment and let me know. If you think a friend might have a more critical eye, please share it and get their thoughts as well. Does what I say make any sense? I'd love to know that too. And of course, thanks for watching Rather Be Squidding. As I dig into these topics, I realize there's so much I don't know. Please subscribe and join me as I try to make sense of it all.